From downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Emergency evacuation. Thousands in California are forced to leave their homes after a damaged dam sparks fears of severe flooding. Rod? Everett, what is Wayne County going to do with this mess? Well, we have a little better answer for you. We'll have the details ahead. Plus, an investigation is now underway after a Q-Line streetcar is vandalized. We'll tell you where the search for answers stands at this hour. But first, breaking news tops our news at noon as workers at a beverage company in Warren have now been let back inside after an ammonia leak there. We want to show you some aerial footage of the Sundance Beverage Company right there on East Nine Mile. That's where emergency crews assembled outside of the building after evacuating the building around 10 this morning. Now, one woman had to be transported to the hospital after inhaling the fumes from that ammonia leak, but she is currently listed in stable condition and that leak has been sealed. Also topping our news at this hour, one of the brand new streetcars for the Q line was vandalized over the weekend. I want to show you some images of the vandalism right here. Our Coco McAvoy joins us live now near Woodward Avenue where the streetcar was spray painted. Coco, this is just shameful. Are they close to finding the person or people responsible? Everett, we do not yet have the answer to that question, but as you said, this is shameful. The queue line hasn't even started operation yet, but I do want to show you something here this noon. This building, the M1 Rail Center, has a number of cameras on the building, so hopefully they were able to capture who did this crime. Now, here's another look at the vandalism. You can see the graffiti says, quote, world's greatest in ACAB spray painted on the side of the rail car. There's no word on what the acronym stands for at this time or who is responsible for this vandalism. The queue line isn't even in operation yet, though they've been testing the cars since December. The rail line extends 3.3 miles north along Woodward Avenue from downtown Detroit, and it will start running come springtime. Now, we did also reach out to Q line and they said that they do not have a comment at this time regarding the vandalism. Reporting live this noon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Oh, it is just so incredibly sad. Coco, thank you. Wayne County's failed jail site will sit just the way it is, as you see here, for the immediate future. Today, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans said that he's going to wait and see whether to take Dan Gilbert up on his offer to buy the jail for the county elsewhere or to build the jail for a county elsewhere so he can build a soccer stadium in the current site. Local 4 Business Editor Rob Maloney is joining us live now at that failed Wayne County jail site with more on this story, Rod. Well, you know, Everett, it's a choice. You know, do you keep building the jail? Do you put in the soccer stadium? Or there's another alternative, and that is to start out both at the same time at, on, on, a, on a separate track. And that's exactly what Warren Evans has decided he wants to do. Let's put a hold on things for just a couple of more months to figure out where to go. In a while, I want closure on this mess as badly as all of you do. We have to get it right. The jail project's been a decade in the making, and it's still half big. Wayne County Executive Warren Evans today at a news conference said that he's skeptical of the Rock Ventures' Dan Gilbert proposal that arrived in his desk last week. I've stated on many occasions, I think finishing the Gratia jail on the existing site is the most co cost-effective option for us. I've yet to be persuaded otherwise. It's intriguing enough, though, to consider a counteroffer, since Evans believes this is a negotiation after all. While he tries to get a better deal, Evans is still going to proceed with the initial construction process, putting up half a million dollars to keep Walsh Construction, the only bidder to build the new jail, preparing its construction processes. That'll take several months. Evans will also have a number of legal and jail project experts vet the Rock Ventures deal. Evans believes proceeding down two tracks at once is really the best answer for now. A major sticking point, though, is Gilbert's request for a rebate on the savings the county will get from a new jail, a non-starter for County Commission Chairman Gary Warrenchuk. To me, that almost says that they presented us with a, with a, a possible proposal uh, that comes, comes to us over budget. So one of the things that we have here now is the question of whether they should proceed in any direction. And of course, you don't want to bet against Dan Gilbert's vision of anything. And so we'll have to see where this all goes. But we have found out that there is one thing that could kill this thing, make it dead on arrival. We'll have the answer for that coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Reporting live downtown, Rod Maloney, Local 4.
The mayor of Flint is planning to meet with Governor Rick Snyder to discuss the contents of a surprising letter that she received last week. Mayor Karen Weaver says state water credits for Flint residents were supposed to end at the end of March, but the state plans to stop them at the end of February. Weaver also wants to discuss funding for the city's water, water source, and she wants to clear up any public misperceptions about our city. We want people to come to Flint. We want them to know that we can take care of ourselves. My goal has always been we want the state out. People thought Flint couldn't recover, Flint couldn't come back, that we couldn't take care of ourselves, but we're proving them wrong, and that's what we need to continue to do. So, uh, now, Mayor Weaver says her meeting with the governor should take place a little bit later this week or early, early next, next week. week. To let them know Here in downtown Detroit, the first public memorial event for sports and business icon Mike Illich will get underway in less than an hour. Starting at 1 p.m., the public is invited to Comerica Park right there at the big tiger statue to write down their memories or condolences for the family of the owner of the Detroit Tigers and the Red Wings. On Wednesday then from noon until 8 p.m., the body of Mike Illich will lie in, rep in repose for public visitation right there in the grand lobby of the Fox Theater across from uh, Comerica Park right there on Woodward. Other memorial events will be announced in the near future. Nearly 200,000 people have been forced to leave their homes as the dam in Northern California threatens to give way. As Steve Patterson explains, now engineers and crews are working to relieve pressure on the dam as more rain is expected on Wednesday. Officials here are trying to avoid catastrophe, a predicted 30 foot wall of solid water that could come if one of these spillways collapses. So the emergency evacuation order was given out quickly on Sunday night. Nearly 200,000 people told to evacuate their homes. Many of them we've been, been speaking to just simply threw their belongings in plastic bags, threw those plastic bags into cars, and then headed into a very sc scary situation of people trying to escape and get out of here. That was basically caused by so much rainfall that we've gotten in this month. There's been so much talk about the drought in California over years. Now it seems like, especially in Northern California, there's been so much water that it's overloading some of these dam systems. This one was simply overloaded based on the fact that the spillways were also damaged by the amount of water. The erosion on the primary spillway and then the secondary spillway led to officials worrying about those spillways possibly giving way to a massive tidal wave, which would devastate communities, particularly low-lying, in this area. So now the work is being done that engineers are checking out the spillways, seeing if there's any way they can shore this up before the next rainfall is predicted to come this week. Back to you. So we're dealing with weather systems there, weather situations in California, of course, in the Northeast as well. And we had our own bit of weather over the weekend. We did, yeah, strong winds yesterday. And if you're wondering, as mild as our weather has been, where all the rain and snow has gone, Boy, a lot of it there in California. It gets sucked up by the Sierra Nevada mountains, sort of a squeegee effect, squeezes the moisture out of the storms that roll across the country, and that's why they're dealing with such a problem there. Here, boy, I'll tell you, we're in for a decent day. We have 39 degrees at Metro, 35 in Pontiac, 37 Howell, 38 in Monroe right now, Harrow, Ontario at 37. Winds are a little bit stronger today than I anticipated. I'll be honest, thought we'd be under 15 miles an hour, but we do have some areas like uh, Metro Airport at 17 miles an hour. So it does feel a little bit cooler out there. Wind chills in the upper 20s to near 30, but still with that gorgeous sunshine, feels good for the soul. 39 now to about 41 through your neighborhoods in the afternoon hours with plenty of sunshine. You see that right here. We are going to be tracking a little snowmaker coming your way soon. We'll do that coming up. In the meantime, you can get your four zone weather for your zone. Find it on the weather tab. Click on Detroit.com. Right. Brandon, thank you. The new week begins with a full agenda for President Trump and his administration, beginning with a White House meeting with the Prime Minister of Canada. 
The president greeted Justin Trudeau at the White House about an hour ago. Trade and jobs are expected to be the top topics in discussions, along with talks of women in the workforce, with the president and prime minister joining a roundtable discussion with women business executives. And the president is also facing questions about his national security advisor, retired Army General Michael Flynn. There are reports Flynn discussed U.S. sanctions against Russia with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. before the president was inaugurated. Now, if true, Flynn's action would violate the law. The administration has backed away from publicly defending Flynn. White House sources say the president has not decided if he'll take any action against Flynn. And the president could get some good news from Capitol Hill today. The Senate is expected to vote on and approve the nomination of Steve Mnuchin as Secretary of Treasury. Many Democrats opposed the nomination, but confirmation is expected. Back here at home now, a public hearing is expected today in Lyon Township. The Planning Commission is expected to meet to discuss future projects. The Irwin Orchards planned development was expected to be discussed, but that is no longer on the agenda. All right, so to come here at noon, staying on the straight and narrow, there is a new program that's working to keep teens out of trouble in Chicago. We're going to show you how it's making an impact. But first, looking for answers. Senseless violence has two young girls in critical condition now after being shot in the head in separate incidents. Were the children targeted? That's the big question. And we are continuing to follow breaking news out of Warren for you this afternoon, where workers at a beverage company have been left back inside after an ammonia leak. This leak happened at the Sundance Beverage Company. It's right there on East Nine Mile in Warren. We have learned one woman was transported to the hospital. She is in stable condition, but again, all employees have since been let back in. There's a lot of red. Welcome back. North Korea says that their test launch of a new ballistics missile was a success. On Sunday, North Korea launched a previously unpublicized long range missile. This morning, the country announced the test launch was successful, and in response to the launch, the United States, South Korea, and Japan all requested an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council. That meeting is expected to happen sometime this afternoon. In Chicago now, two young girls are in critical condition after being shot in the head. 12-year-old Kanari Bowers and 11-year-old Takaya Holmes are both in the hospital after they were shot in two separate incidents Saturday night. Bowers was at her school's playground when she was shot in the head, while Holmes was in the backseat of a minivan with her mom and brother when she was shot. Now both girls are fighting for their lives as their family is trying to figure out why this even happened. It's a hurt. It's a hurt. What y'all doing, man? Over a piece of the street that don't even belong to you. You can really feel that uncle's pain. The shootings were part of another violent weekend in Chicago where five people were killed and 18 others were hurt. And at this time, authorities do not believe that the girls were even the intended targets as they continue to investigate. And in order to stop more shootings like that from happening around Chicago, there's a new program hoping to keep teens on the right path. The Becoming a Man program was created to help male students who were being influenced by gangs. It offers members a place to get away from all the violence and even connect with other teens who might be going through the same thing. So far, the results speak for themselves. Them has made me become more responsible, respectful, and made me have more control of my actions, my behavior, and made me become a better person. So it's a start. Since the program was created, violent crime arrests have gone down 50%, in fact, and high school graduation rates have risen, risen 19% for teens in that program. Every little bit helps, and hopefully that city can turn around. Still to come here at noon, heavy snow is once again blanketing New England. And believe it or not, Brandon, more could be on the way. We're going to talk about how much could be on tap. And we here are dealing with some decent sunshine today and at least part of tomorrow. But we are tracking some Valentine's Day or part of the day snowy. Beyond the glitz and the glamour of the auto show. Identified uh, four to five. Uh, the new car reveals 14 to 15 potential uh, adult victims of human trafficking. And the visitors to our city. May 22 arrest. There was something sinister going on. We were able to uh, recover two children uh, that were involved in uh, sex trafficking. Tonight at 11, while you were checking out the cars, what really went on behind closed doors? What's 
All right, welcome back everybody. While we might not be expecting any snow around here today, some other parts of the world aren't really that lucky. Brandon, uh, thankfully, I'm, I'm happy that we aren't getting snow right now. <laughs> we did yesterday, though. Yeah, you know, I'm always caught in the middle on this because I love the snow, but we're going to feature a couple of places perhaps getting a little too much snow. We'll start with a scene out in Japan where they got nearly three feet of snow over the weekend and some of the hardest hit areas cars were trapped residents forced to walk to work and most of the roads still blocked by snow. It's the most snow they've seen since 1984 and nearly all public transportation shut down. City workers continue to clear the streets and unofficially a couple of people uh, reportedly passed away due to the extreme snow in Japan. Meanwhile, back here in the States, in New England, heavy snow is once again blanketing the region. At this time, winter storm warnings are in effect across the northeast, where over two feet of snow still possible, mainly way up in the main uh, Nova Scotia area, where snow and high winds are burying that region of the country. And all this comes just days after the region was hit by another huge snowstorm late last week. You probably remember our coverage and preparation for that. So yeah, we are doing a okay here and again I sort of right in the middle on that one because I love the snow I love forecasting the snow I know it's good for business for a lot of people as well but certainly want to keep things safe 39 degrees out there sunshine galore northwest winds at 17 feels like 30 manageable and I think the winds will die down a little bit as we head through the afternoon hours more 7 to 13 miles an hour but getting into the low 40s our north zone may be stuck in the upper 30s but for the most part that sunshine good for the soul and helping us warm up at least into the 41 42 degree range in many of your neighborhoods overnight tonight down to 27 degrees under clear skies another cool one on tap. So here's a look at the clear skies in the area now. Northwest winds creating some of this lake effect cloud cover over the thumb over parts of southern Ontario, maybe uh, up into St. Clair, northern Macomb County as well. And if you're in parts of Wayne, Oakland County looking to the east, you can see those clouds, but they're gently moving from west to east. We have a couple of systems that we're watching. This one down here in the extreme south coming out of Texas is going to be a miss for us. In fact, it's going to gain energy and go across the southern third of the country. Could be tracking some severe weather in the deep south in the Gulf region tomorrow. Here's that snow, as we mentioned, up into Maine and Nova Scotia. That is some heavy, heavy snow that continues to fall while we wait for some snow on on Valentine's Day, but it's going to be at night. This is coming out of the Yukon, a Yukon clipper. Usually we say Alberta clipper because they come from that province of Canada, but this one coming all the way from the Yukon territories. Nothing happening today. Again, low 40s, feeling a little bit cooler, but that sunshine is great. First half of tomorrow, we should start out with sun and then high clouds start to come in from the north ahead of this little clipper system and then scattered snow showers tomorrow night. Not going to be a ton, but a few areas could get uh, in, you know, that dusting to maybe an inch. Uh, late Tuesday into early Wednesday and then cool air settles in here. I think we'll have a couple of snow showers around on Wednesday as well. It'll be breezy uh, not only tomorrow but into Wednesday and Thursday, which will promote some lake effect flakes and flurries. Don't worry though, we do have warmer weather at the end of the week back in the 40s by Friday and Evrod models are saying 50s for the weekend. Oh boy, that would be great. Brandon, thank you. So to come here at noon, a two legged puppy is learning to walk after being rescued from a garbage can. We'll show you how he's getting around town. Replay song. All right, so finally, this two legged puppy is learning to walk after being rescued from a garbage can. His name is Cupid. Can you believe this? Oh, he's uh, gotten two new legs and now he's going to learn to walk with these prosthetics. Good for him. Bye. 